Hello, my name is Aubrey. I'm so glad you're here because I haven't hauled a book since March. Yes, I have not filmed a book haul since March and I have desperately needed to. I have so many books to haul. I am drowning in books to haul. Where to even begin? If you've seen my last couple of videos, you'll know that this has been an incredibly busy year for me. I got married, my husband and I bought a house. We moved into that house and it's just been a very chaotic period of time. And today I'm going to be showing you all of the sets of books I have. Complete series or duologies, that type of thing. So these are all the special edition sets. Did I say that? Special edition sets. They're pretty and sparkly. I feel that they deserve their own video. So yes, I will be showing you all of those today. I would also like to say that my microphone is still in my A. I haven't found it. I don't know where it is. I'm trying not to freak out. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still looking for it and I'm still recording audio on my phone. So I'm hoping it is serviceable. And again, I do apologize that it's not up to my normal standard. I'm going to start with all the YA series I have and then I'll move on to adult in case some of you out there are only interested in one or the other. Other than that, these are in no particular order. I'm just gonna pull them off the stacks. I'm gonna show you the pretty features. Uh, I'll talk about the series if I know much about it. Some of these I do, some of them I don't. Okay, let's just start. First up, I have the Poison Study Trilogy by Maria V. Snyder. This is like an OG YA fantasy series. I remember like when I first found booktube way back in like 2013 or 14. I don't know if this was ever like a full out, fully popular series, but I remember people talking about it. I've heard very good things about it, and I have also heard that it still holds up. I think it's about a girl who ends up having to be the poison taster for a king or something. <laughs> These all have really gorgeous foiling on the front, on the spines, and on the back. The stenciled edges are so cool. I love the little potions and stuff, especially on this purple one. The end papers are really nice for each book, and and each naked hardcover comes with this character art, which is so cool. I absolutely love character art and character art that's included in any form on the end papers, on a reverse dust jacket, on the naked hardcover. It just makes me really happy. <laughs> all in all, these are stunning editions. I'm really happy to have them. I'm very excited to read this series and I hope I really love it. Next up, I have what has quickly become one of my most favorite YA series, if not my most favorite YA series. I read this I believe two years ago. It has lived rent-free in my mind ever since. I squealed out loud when Fairy Loot announced these editions. I set my alarm and I was able to snag a set and it is of course The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. I just adore this series and I think these editions are very cool. So first off they have these shiny silver gilded edges. I believe these covers are just the original UK covers. These covers are not what I bought them for. Are you ready? I'm not sure that you are. You might have seen these online, but let's just pretend that you haven't seen them before yet because ah, they're so they're so good. So each one has this foiling, this silver foiling on the cover that's like a tarot card. All of the end papers have art and it's different art front and back, which is crazy. And then all the spines line up. They line up. Oh, and also there's a reversible dust jacket with more art, which is also very cool. I, I don't think I'm going to be displaying them this way, unfortunately, because I just think that the naked hardcovers are so pretty. And I was hoping that maybe these dust jackets would fit my US editions and I could have both, but they're too big, they're too tall, and they don't fit. But the art is really cool. I'm very happy to have it. So yeah, I, I think I'll be displaying them like this or have one of them faced out like this they're just oh the naked hardcovers are so good so I was a little bit concerned I wasn't going to get these because like I said at the beginning of the video I moved my husband and I bought a house and the address when I purchased these books was to our old apartment but my actual subscription was like being forwarded to the house and it was fine and I'd gotten every box I'd gotten a couple of other sets like the poison study set came but these for whatever reason did not and they got lost in the 
mail, you know, so they didn't come and they didn't come and I kept checking and there were no updates on the shipping information and I was like, oh God. So I contacted Fairy Loot and they were like, oh man, it looks like your box is lost. We'll send you another one. <laughs> And I was like, great, but of course they still sent it to the old apartment. They sent it to the address that they had for that order. And I was like, oh no, like it's gonna get lost again or it's gonna get sent to the apartment and I'm never going to get it. And I was so nervous about it. And I, I was just really upset that of all of all the books, of all the sets, this is just one of my favorite series and I was gonna be really devastated if I didn't get one. But they showed up. They showed up. I'm just glad that they're here. So yeah, and if you haven't read The Raven Cycle, I have a full series review if you'd like to watch it. But really quick, if I can just convince you, if the idea of something dreamy and atmospheric and heart-wrenchingly painful sounds like a good time, read it. <laughs> Next up I have a duology that I honestly can't believe I haven't read yet. It's Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. A Daughter of Smoke and Bone is one of my favorite trilogies of all time. And I just still haven't gotten around to this duology. I don't know what's wrong with me. I sat on these Illumicrate editions for a while. They went on sale for Black Friday and I caved and I decided to get them. These dust jackets are really pretty but underneath the dust jacket is what I bought them for so let me show you. So underneath is this lovely foiling, a beautiful homage to the original UK hardcovers. So we've got these three large golden moths with all the like pretty foiling details. I just think it's really stunning. I especially love all the other features on top of this. The end papers have artwork, which I always appreciate. They also have really stunning stenciled edges. I really need to just read this series because I know I'm gonna love it. Once upon a time, I probably could have told you what this duology is about, but I feel like the conversation around this series has died so much since it came out. And I can't remember, I feel like it's something about like a lost library or city. Oh, the city of Weep, right? There's a lost city of Weep, but I will read them. I, oh. I almost picked this up at the end of the year just as kind of a like last minute, get a few more good books in at the very end of the year, but I decided to read Divine Rivals instead, which was not a mistake. I'm really enjoying it. But yeah, I need, <laughs> I need to get these off my TBR. Next up, I have a series that I read this year and ended up falling in love with, and it is the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black, and these are the lit Joy, is that what the company's called? Lit Joy Special Editions. These were so expensive. <laughs> These were so much money, but they are really pretty. Um, oh crap. Don't drop them on the floor. They're all foiled. Like every cover is just covered in foil. The edges are this gilded gold. Each of these is annotated. They come with end paper art and illustrations, commissioned illustrations. I mean, these are just truly unbelievable. Like the, the covers alone, even without all the illustrations and anything else, like these are gorgeous. But yeah, I ended up really, really enjoying the series, like a lot more than I thought I would. The writing is beautiful and the, the world of fairy is just so, the way Holly Black writes it, it's just so creepy and dark and the fae themselves are really backstabby and manipulative and they're always playing tricks, but they're also ethereal and beautiful and alluring. And it's just, ah, I, I liked it. I liked I liked it for the story, I liked it for the world building and the characters. So yeah, a series that I did not think was for me that did end up being for me. Next up I have another series that I read and loved this year and that is The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. I finished these books, loved them, and lamented the fact that there were no beautiful editions of them and then Fairy Loot announced these like two weeks later. <laughs> I was so excited and you know this is another one that I like set my alarm for I made sure I was like I was there these editions from fairy loot are stunning just like very beautiful simple white covers but the spines all match up to make a design which I love and the stenciled edges are a map which is just so freaking cool and it goes all the way around like it goes all the way around 
But that's not all. The naked hardcover comes with foiled character art, which is very pretty, and the end papers have art as well, which again, I love. So yeah, these are just so very pretty. If you haven't read The Remnant Chronicles, I also have a full series review for this trilogy. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I especially think it's one of those series that like becomes wonderful. Like it starts off pretty good and then it just gets better and better. And then by book three, it's like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is a really underrated series and I truly fell in love with it this year. I like, I know that the first book sold well and, and got a lot of hype when it came out. I haven't really seen a lot of people talking about the whole trilogy, just how good it is. Like it gets so good and it explores a lot of really interesting themes. Anyway, yeah, I just, I highly recommend the series. I love these editions. Complex characters, cool plot, slow burn romance. Okay, so next up I have Legendborn and Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. These are the fairy loot editions. They have very cool stenciled edges with this like, I don't know, ombre effect on them. I don't know what you would call that. I am really looking forward to reading this series. I haven't picked it up yet because there's only two books out. And I think that the third book, it just got announced that it's not coming out until 2025. Is that right? Which is a long time from now. You all who know me know that I don't like reading unfinished series. I like to wait until the last book is out and then binge it all. But yeah, these are very, very pretty. Again, I like, I don't know what effect you would call this. It's like, <laughs> like, I wish I had a word to pull out of my mouth right now, but I don't. I keep wanting to say it's like, um, it's like ombre-ish, but it's more like water or or light. They're, they're both kind of like that. And then uh, again, stenciled edges, real cool. And the end papers have character art. Do we even know how many books are going to be in this series? Because I don't, I think it's going to be more than a trilogy, but is it only a quartet or is it just ongoing? I'm sure you guys are familiar with this series. It's like Arthurian legend meets Dark Academia. I've heard fantastic things. I can't wait to read it. I'm just kind of holding out for a little while. Right, and then my last set of YA books are more fairy loot books. A lot of fairy loot. These are the Margaret Rogerson books, An Enchantment of Ravens, Sorcery of Thorns, and Mysteries of Thorn Manor. These are not all in the same series. I think these two go together. So Sorcery of Thorns. I think this is a novella that came out recently. And this one's just a standalone, but it matches the edition of Vespertine that they came out with quite a while ago. And when they announced this book, they said that they were gonna do matching editions for all of Margaret Rogerson's other books. And then they proceeded to not do that for like a whole year. <laughs> but eventually they did. I haven't read any. <laughs> Margaret Rogerson books yet. I don't know which one to start with. I can't decide between Sorcery of Thorns and An Enchantment of Ravens. I think there are different camps of people who, who really like one versus the other. I don't know, I guess I feel a little stuck. I know that's silly, but decisions are hard. So yeah, these are very pretty. Lots of stunning foiling, just absolutely everywhere. This one, I believe, An Enchantment of Ravens, this one's about a mortal girl who is a painter and she is hired to paint a fae, like a fae man, and she accidentally paints human emotion into his eyes, which is a big no-no, and I think she gets kidnapped or something and like taken to the fae realm as punishment. I remember being really intrigued by this book when it came out and then it getting like mixed reviews, and so I never picked it up. I think this one, Sorcery of Thorns, seems to be the more popular one. I don't actually know what this one's about, but I think it is another kind of fairy tale esque romance. So yeah, I'm excited to finally read a Margaret Rogerson book. I really do think that she as an author will be up my alley. Okay, I have one more set of YA books I completely forgot about. It is the... Oh, can I hold them up? The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. These are, again, more fairy loot editions. These have this like rainbowy foiling and the spines make a picture. I I wish this set had included the novella and the bind up of short stories. They said that they might come out with those eventually. I hope they do because it feels a little weird to not have a complete set. But yeah, these are just really fun books and really fun additions. I like, again, I love that rainbow 
glow effect. I never actually finished this series. I got so close. I read everything up until winter and I think I just got burnt out on it. I stopped. I waited too long and I didn't continue and I, I should have because I was right there at the end. Maybe one day I'll go back and finish it but I like I really did enjoy the series. It's just like fun YA. Like they're popcorn books. There's just enough action and there's just enough plot and just enough romance and it's not mind-blowing by any means. It's fun, you know? It's fun. So I was really happy when Fairy Loot announced these because I think they're stunning and they come with character art on the end papers. Again, the spines make that cool picture. Also, the edges have like the symbol from the front cover, which is just a fun little detail. I hope that they, again, do the matching novella and short story bind up. I just think that would be really cool to have a complete set in these editions. All right, so that was it for the YA books. Now we're on to my adult special editions. And again, these are in like no particular order. I'm just pulling them off the stacks. First up, I have The Priory of the Orange Tree and A Day of Fallen Night, both by Samantha Shannon. You guys may have seen these editions in my video, which was kind of a little discussion video called Should Special Editions Get Reprints? And I featured these books pretty heavily in that video because these Illumicrate editions were getting reprints. They are gorgeous. I'm obsessed with the stenciled edges on these. They're just so pretty with the weapon and the fruit. They're just really nice. The covers are the exact same as like the traditional editions, but underneath there is a lovely naked hardcover with a dragon. Little details of foiling and the end papers are also very pretty. The sun is streaming in and doing all sorts of wonky stuff to my exposure. I haven't read either of these books. I am admittedly intimidated by how large they are, but I will get around to reading them one day. I really wanted to read Priory of the Orange Tree this summer, but this summer was, was really busy, so uh, I didn't get around to it, but hopefully next year. This is just a really beloved series on booktube and in the book community. I think I'm just kind of up in my head about like how long these are. Big books do sometimes overwhelm me and I am definitely overwhelmed by these two but one day I will read them and in the meantime I will be enjoying these lovely stenciled edges on my shelves. All right next up also from Illumicrate is Ninth House and Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. These are really cool editions. They're completely black. There's no text on the covers. It's just the two animals and then underneath the dust jacket there's a skeleton of the animal which I just, it's, <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> also end paper art, rabbit, dead rabbit. So I didn't realize this series was finished. I thought there were gonna be a lot more books and I have heard that she might continue but that apparently it's like done for now. Can anyone else confirm this? Like I was under the impression this was gonna be like a big long series. I've been holding off reading them but I don't know I was watching someone on booktube and I can't remember who. They mentioned that the series was finished and I was like oh. <laughs> I love Lee Bardugo, like I love her Shadow and Bone series and Mix of Crows. So I have been looking forward to reading something else by her. I was just waiting around for these books to be done, but uh, maybe they already are. Next up, I have three sets of Broken Binding books. I didn't plan it this way. This is just how I ended up stacking the books. So first off, it's The Wolf of Orin Yago, Chronicles of the Wolf Queen by K.S. Villaso. And I'm just gonna read you the blurb for this one because I don't remember what it's about. They called me the Bitch Queen the she-wolf, because I murdered a man and exiled my king the night before they crowned me. Born under the crumbling towers of her kingdom, Queen Talion was the shining jewel and legacy of the bloody war of the wolves. It nearly tore her nation apart, but her arranged marriage to the son of a rival clan heralds peace. However, he suddenly disappears before their reign can begin, and the kingdom is fractured beyond repair. Years later, he sends a mysterious invitation to meet. Talion journeys across the sea in hopes of reconciling their past. An assassination attempt quickly dashes those dreams stranded in a land she doesn't know with no idea whom she can trust. Talion will have to embrace her namesake. Oh so yeah, I remember when these books were coming out and being very intrigued by them and so I was really excited when The Broken Binding announced that they were going to be subscription books. All the covers are just like the normal covers but underneath is just, just truly epic foiling. So, so cool. Wraps around. And then look at the stenciled edges. These are just such cool additions. 
<laughs> so I really, I hope I enjoy this series because I would have a very hard time parting with these. Okay, next up I have, I'm going to like lean out of the sun. Next up I have the Tide Child Trilogy by R.J. Barker. This is another Broken Binding set. These are again just really, really cool. I feel like the Broken Binding has been just knocking it out of the park in terms of its editions and the features. Like the covers are the same, but everything else is like top-notch. The foiling under the dust jackets, the end papers, the stenciled edges. It's really good quality and I'm really happy with my subscription. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, all right, this is book one, The Bone Ships, book two, Call of the Bone Ships, and lastly, The Bone Ships Wake. Yeah, again, really hoping I like this trilogy because I would have a really hard time parting with these. Okay, and then I have the Joe Abercrombie standalone novels, Red Country. I don't know what order these go in actually. Red Country, Best Served Cold, and The Heroes. So I guess you figure out the order because of the, the picture <laughs> on uh, the stenciled edges. Similar to the original trilogy, the covers themselves are pretty basic. A little bit of foiling, there's a quote on the spine for each one, and a map. I don't think I'm gonna go through and show you all of these because they're not as interesting as what's come after. I definitely think the coolest feature of these are the stenciled edges and the fact that they're hardcover. I really need to get around to reading some Joe Abercrombie. <laughs> He's an author, again, I really meant to get around to this year and I didn't, but hopefully next year will be less chaotic. <laughs> I really need to get a, a curtain in here or something, but I don't have one yet. Also from The Broken Binding, I have a memory called Empire and a desolation called Peace by Arc Arkady Martin. These were not subscription books, these were just special edition books you could buy individually or as a set, which I did because of the stenciled edges. These are just some of the coolest stenciled edges I've ever seen. Insides are pretty basic, just a little bit of foiling, no end paper art. It was mostly about the stenciled edges. I don't, I don't know what this series is about. I, I should, having gone out of my way to buy them. <laughs> I, they're sci-fi. I know this one was a Hugo Award winner. I feel like it's, it's like a political murder mystery, but I, I don't actually know. I don't actually know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ambassador Mahit travels to the Empire's interstellar capital, eager to take up her new post. Yet when she arrives, she discovers her predecessor was murdered. I've heard terrific things. I can't wait to read them. That's all I have to say about that. Are we down to our last books? Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Okay. Last, I have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I'm, I am like punching to get out of the sun. These were Illumicrate editions. A long way to a small angry planet, a close and common orbit, record of a space-born few, the galaxy and the ground within. These are very pretty. Again, uh, I feel like it's all about the edges with these. These galaxy edges are really, really stunning. And of course, the UK hardcovers, like the UK covers in a hardcover format, because I don't think these all got UK hardcover print runs. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong about that. I think only some of them did. Later ones in the series. I could be wrong, I don't know. The end papers are more more galaxy. I've always loved the UK covers for these, and I actually, a long, long time ago, I ordered a paperback of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but it was so small. Like, the UK paperbacks are so small, and they're, like, stocky. Like, the paper is really stiff, and the print was really small, and I just, I knew <laughs> I would never actually read that edition just because it was so uncomfortable, and so I got rid of it. I was so excited when Illumicrate announced these because I have been greatly looking forward to reading this series and I think the UK editions are, are gorgeous. They are superior. So yeah, I'm, I'm super happy to have these. I can't wait to read them. And yeah, okay, so that is it for my book haul. <laughs> just hold on, I'm gonna create some shade for myself. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more from me. I hope to see you next time. <laughs> Bye!